Hello and welcome to episode 11 of Colonizing Duna. Fred here. Um, I should have probably called this episode 10B because after all, it's just going to be designing the Duna crane I was talking about in the previous episode and I didn't have time to do it in the end and forgot because it would have been a 15 minute video or something if I would have included this and this crane is cool enough to deserve its own video. So, and it's going to be assembling most of the blocks that we're going to be sending to Duna by blocks. I mean, those. Uh, half orange tanks with uh, docking pores on all ends so the crane will just be able to lift them up and dock them together and in the end form some cool structures I'm hoping and it'll be easier to send uh, to Duna as well because I just have to stack them up in some sort of huge columns with shitload of parachutes send them in the orbit and then just uh, recuperate them with this awesome crane so the wheels are going to be retractable and that provides me with two mode on this crane rover mode moving around and then lifting mode all the way will be distributed then on the girders and not on the wheels because in my previous designs on this crane I completely messed up I just <sighs> with the weight being on all those wheels it just ended up really just falling apart constantly and the suspensions from the wheels would absorb the thing but not evenly because the arm was on one end and at least with the girders it provides some sort of stability to the ground and I ended up sticking some smaller girders on each end uh, horizontally to um, stabilize the damn thing even more once in, it, it is in crane mode. Uh, those wheels as well, once they're retracted, the full weight is distributed on the girders, so it's helping stabilizing them. But if I want, I can uh, lower them a little bit at about 45 degree angle, so um, the edge of the wheels are touching the ground, it's activating the brake and it's helping stabilizing even the crane a little more. I tried it uh, originally uh, with uh, without the counterweight system that I installed on this one and uh, <laughs> some funky thing happens because uh, since uh, I was trying to lift 20 tons the rover was weighing 20 tons and uh, the refueling arm tends to bend a lot once you uh, really start lifting above 10 tons especially if it's long like the one I designed here um, you get some sort of whipping effect and so for a second I'm like oh cool I'm lifting it and the weight, well the fuel tank I was lifting up started going down again and it whipped my rover back over end and crashed so that wasn't good so I installed finally in this one uh, a metal plate in the middle so it's giving me an anchor point for a senior docking port and all I'll have to do on Duna is just put there the counterweight that I've been talking about this is gonna be a probably a quarter size orange tank uh, no not a quarter size a half size orange tank I keep saying half size orange tank it's just I hope you know what I'm talking about it's, it's just the one that contains half the fuel that an orange tank would the uh, keep forgetting the name anyway it'll come back to me um, just docking it there just picking it up with the crane docking it there and then I got the counterweight that means I can lift 20 tons if I got 20 tons there those few those fuel tanks were 18 tons 18 tons Plus the two docking ports, one on the top and bottom, it should be like 19 something, so it'll, it'll be just right. And that should allow me to build the base. So the base will be base, uh, will be base, the base will be base, yeah sure. The base will be built around uh, a Lego approach, as I said, with those building blocks. So I can just stack them up on top of one another, make some towers and some cool stuff I'm hoping. And in the end... Uh, building those habitation modules and stuff. I don't have to pretend they're habitation modules. There's just be fuel tanks with solar panels on them and things, but uh, I'm also planning to send some Mitch Hiker modules and stuff and just pimp them out, but most of the structures are going to be made out of fuel tanks and, and things like that just to... Uh, plus, it's ne it never hurts to have fuel on the ground because after all, uh, all those rovers, that refueling rover is going to have to be refueled somewhere. So, and... Uh, I was talking earlier in the previous episode about making two bases on the surface in the end once I got the space plane built, but I've been sidetracked with this crane because I was uh, thinking about it while I was sending the uh, the last rover to Duna and I'm like, damn, I need a crane, that'd be so cool. And it would make the base building so much easier as well. And then I thought, oh, cool, but then the crane's got to be able to move, so it's got to be a rover as well. And, oh, well. And this is in sandbox mode as well, if you've been following me before in all my series, I've always been playing uh, career mode, except for like that chip spinning video I made, that was pretty funny. But uh, 
I went back to sandbox mode because I just wanted to see what I could do with all the parts available. And I figured out that I only, I'm only missing those square uh, plate, metal plates and those giant rover wheels. And that's about just an extra thousand science or something. So I'm not going to send this rover to do not just yet. I'm going to need the, that extra thousand science to unlock it in my career mode and then send it there. But a thousand science, it sounds like maybe a, another min miss mission and all the science I can get from Duna, and that'd be enough. So it doesn't sound, it sounds like maybe two episodes, three episodes, and we'll try and send that thing in orbit. But at least it'll be designed, and maybe in the meantime, I'll find some other ways to build a more efficient crane or hear some feedbacks from you guys because I, I really, I'm really interested in those cranes, but I haven't seen too many of them anywhere. And, it's just a pain he has to make them stable. Because it'd be so easy to put the arm in the middle, but then you lose all that <laughs> transport space somehow. And it's really annoying. Like, that's why I ended up putting the senior docking port in the middle of the rover, because originally I put it on the back end, but then you have to drive around with the, the, the counterweight on the back end of the rover if you don't have to constantly undock it and move it around and blah blah blah. So, but then all the weight is on your front wheels and the smallest bump your front wheels break. So I had to send it up setting up in the middle but then it's not the most efficient counterweight because it still wants to tip over a little bit but there's still the weight from all those wheels so the, your rover weighs 40 tons if you got a 20 tons uh, counterweight. But <laughs> have that weight is in the arm itself so it's just like Arr. it's really close but hopefully on Duna the gravity being lower it'll all make things a hell of a lot easier I'm hoping it'll make me able to lift heavier things well not heavier things but at least the structural integrity of the arm should remain the same they, they'll, they'll bend the same but the weight will be uh, less that should be cool so here it is, our rover of doom, testing out the arm all quick in here. Of course, two of the wheels are not in the right group, but it's not the most important thing. So here's what I was talking about, about setting up the wheels at some sort of 45 degree angle, so you're still helping uh, with stabilizing the, the rover itself. And here you might start seeing the bending, because the arm is really huge. How am I going to send that thing to orbit? What have I designed? Well, it's got to be sent probably with a really heavy shit below it. I don't know. I could use that docking port where it's set in the middle. Huh. Huh. We'll see later. So, yeah. The arm, it articulates completely. The There's a power hinge right uh, behind the, the senior docking port. So it can pivot 180 degree one side, 180 degree the other. So it is pretty awesome and you can rotate all around it. All those um, are they pistons? Yeah, uh, can, uh, no, cylinders can also uh, extend so it gives another extra reach and I love that thing. <laughs> this rover is so cool. Yeah, too bad the wheels are not in the right groups but that's just small detail because it just looks retarded that way. It's like, oh, I can't lift up. Oh, I want to get up. Oh, no, I don't. <laughs> but there it is. It's ready to drive, and it kind of looks like a scorpion too, especially the way that arm is set up right now. Uh, but it's sort of on score on purpose. This is going to be called the Duna Scorpion Crane, the DSC. Could be the Duna Roving Scorpion Crane, but that just gets longer and longer. So just call it the Scorpion Crane. And um, I, I haven't seen that many uh, crane design anything videos anywhere. If uh, you guys have some, please. Link them because I'm really intrigued. I need some something similar to this to build my base on Duna. So if you have any ideas, anything that could help, link, 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 and I'll try it because uh, I'm not in desperate mode, but I'm really trying. And this can probably do it for me. So here again, stopping the rover. Should have probably put a counterweight on it so you could have seen it driving with 20 tons on it. It doesn't change much because those rovers drive as fast with 20 tons as with nothing else, so it doesn't matter much. More parachutes, more solar panels, more batteries, and that rover is good to go. Here it is. The scorpion waving goodbye to you. 
guys thanks for watching see you later